Okay. So real quick, I want to go over strings. And I know we've gone over them before in a few different various aspects, but this one's going to be more on the underlying mechanics, how they work in association with arrays, the difference between a character array and an actual string, and then going over some of the more specific functions that are associated directly with strings using the string library. And then I think also at the end it goes over a good bit of uh, specific character functions as well. So let's go ahead and take a look at it real quick and see that they're not too bad. Now, as I said, they're not too bad. While strings are not a data type, if you come from a higher level language, then this is one of the more uh, thorn the side topics that exists is understanding how strings work in C compared to maybe like Python or C++ or maybe just say sharp JavaScript, something like that, as they work very differently. Because again, like I said, they are character arrays that have a specific feature to them. So utilize string literal so far, currently whenever you use printf, kind of going over character arrays a little bit last time, but there is an underlying structure in a character array that makes a string very specific, and that is the fact that the characters will be null terminated. So let's say if I initialize character array, let's say five, right? And I set that, I'm not gonna write code, I just want it to be a string literal. Duh. So what is going to be in this character array C H E and then a null terminator. Yeah. So this end one because we have element zero, one, two, three, and four for all five of our actual character elements. However, we don't need all of them. So we initialized five characters in memory, allocated them in memory, and only filled in the first four. Now again, we only need the three for the, however, strings are always going to be null terminated. That is the big difference between a default character array and an actual string associated by C. So this means it's that if I wanted to make a character array of instead of five, maybe 25, I can do that. And it gives me space to put a string of up to 25 characters in that character array, do whatever I want with it. If I don't need all of it, that's perfectly fine. You'll see that as we go on. So, strings, again, are just simply arrays of characters, so it's very easy to adjust them by simply altering the elements inside of the array. That also includes shortening the string if we want to by adjusting where the null terminating character is. Here on the right, we have an example of creating a sample string of 15 characters. We have, this is text, the spaces or anything and the compiler will automatically add the null character so you don't have to worry about actually putting it in by default whenever you initialize it so you can tell that we fill in most of the data here you see our null character goes right after and then we have four elements empty because we didn't need everything and if we print it we get this is oh that's supposed to be text this is text i just got the comment wrong my bad and then here we have sample string six, so that the actual six character in this array is going to be equal to a null character. And you can see that we import a null character here, as opposed to the one at the back. That is where this string will stop now. So we'll go to th, is, capital is, null character. If we print this out, yeah, we still have this ext null character back here. But because we're printing it a string, it's just going to go up to the first null character, stopping at this is, and it's done. You see again here, we're going to repeat it by setting a null character four, and to get after this, and we print out, we just get this. So we can manipulate this just like any default array. The integers, floats, doubles, characters, doesn't matter. It is just some item, some data, in memory that we can adjust however we want. Now, for strings specifically, you just need to keep in mind this null character is very, very important. 
if you need to have a string of a certain amount of characters, when you make the character array, you have to keep that null terminating character in mind to accommodate for it. Because if I did text, yeah, that's four characters. I need that fifth character to be a null terminating character or else you're going to have a very, very bad time. So, moving on, let's do these string functions so we've gone over copy before so the function string copy enables the ability to set a string variable to another string so we have string copy destination string source string copy source string up to and including the null character to destination string so here we have an empty string of sample string five so we have five characters to work with we have some integer test var equals 14 if test bar 14 modulo 2 so that's going to be equal to 0 and if it's equal to 1 if it's true then we'll do string copy sample string odd and if it ends up being 0 false in this case then string copy will sample string even so basically what's happening with these two string copies you're taking this string literal odd or even and we're going to copy it into sample string. So it's going to go character by character until it gets to the first null character. Copy that into sample string. So for odd, you'll end up with three actual characters in null character. If it does even, you'll have four actual characters in null character, so it's five. It's going to copy those character by character into our original sample string up here. We'll print out, and in this case, it would end up printing even. And again, you'd have your null character. This doesn't print out though. That's about it. Not too bad. Now, in addition to string copy, we have string copy number, or in this case, string str in CPY, which is a string number copy. That enables the ability to set string variable to a specific number of characters from another string. Now, same way, with destination source string, source string goes into destination, but this time we have this number here. That's going to be an integer, and it's going to copy up to that number of characters, including a null character, into the destination string. So here we have character sample string 11, and I have a string of 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Again, null character at the end. And we have another one of character digits also 11. Just that these are the same size, so they'll accommodate the proper space. We have an integer here of num, which it was 5. So now we have string copy, my destination string where I want to copy characters into is digits, this empty character array. Then we have the source string, which is sample string up here, my actual string of digits. And then the parameter I want to actually copy the number of is just going to be my integer of num of five. So we're going to copy the first five characters. So one, two, three, four, five. That's your one, two, three, four. Copy that into digits. And then if I print it, just like this. And again, we have a null character at the end. We just care about these five characters right now. So that's during copy number. It's far more niche than just the default copy function but if you need to copy some dynamic amount of characters from a larger string then it's very helpful in that case it's just that it's again like i said it's pretty niche so moving on we have catenate so ser cat enables the ability to append a string to another string variable so essentially if we had well, the string cat, we could concatenate another string into the end of it, like dog. So you get cat dog. So, we have the string cat, same thing, destination string, source string. They're going to function very, very similar. But this copies source string up to including our null character to the end of destination string, starting at destination string's null character. So it's going to overwrite that null character from destination string add the characters from our source string including its null character which be fine now keep in mind that your destination string 
needs to accommodate all of the new data that's being transplanted into it. So that's where we're going to notice that my sample string here is 11 characters long when I definitely do not need 11 characters just for the word sample. However, if I add the five characters here from text, again, keep in mind the null character, then I'm obviously going to need some more space here. So here is a string cat, sample string, which is sample, and cat string, which is text. When I print that out, I end up with sample. Again, the null character from sample gets overwritten, and then text, like so. And there's no space here, just keep that in mind. Well, this is cat nation, it's not too bad, pretty simple. We've gone just like copy has a number specific function, concatenate does too. So concatenate num or string number cat. Enables the ability to append a specific number of characters from a string to another string. So same setup, destination string, source string, the actual number of characters you want to copy. And then just like the last one, you just copy the number of characters to the end of destination string, appending your null character, overriding destination string's null character. That's about it. So very, very simple example here. Same sample string, 11 characters long. We have cat string, which we're gonna concatenate nine characters long then it's going to be test text we want to extract the first four characters from cat string and append them to the end of sample string so let me print that out end up sample from the original string remove its null terminator and then we want ee -E st append our new null terminator and that is our new sample string so again, not too bad. Moving on, this one's actually pretty interesting. This is going to be character search. We are going to search to see if a specific character exists in a string or not. And it's honestly kind of a weird name here. It's string char. It's not very descript in my honest opinion if that's what it's supposed to be, but it's searching for a character in a string. So you can think of it that way. So enables the ability to search a string for a specific character. In this case, we just have string char, source string, and the character we want to search for. Now, this is going to return what is known as null. If search char does not exist, it also returns the address of the first occurrence. So the functionality I'm going to have in this sample code is just determining if a character does or does not exist in an existing string. However, this last note here, the address of the first occurrence, you can do a lot with that. We haven't really touched on what addresses are, but it's basically the location in memory and I will probably touch, I'll probably come back to this particular function whenever we get to actually talking about memory and the different memory addresses and how we associate them with arrays and whatnot. So I'll come back to character search for now. we we'll us do the very common, does a character exist in a string, yes or no, and move on. So same sample string, 11 character song, sample, if string char, Sample string A. So we are calling the character search function. We are passing in this string of sample to search in, and then we want to look for a lowercase a. So if the result is not equal to null, then that means that we got the address of the first occurrence. Because remember, the only time that we will get null is if the character doesn't exist at all. So that's why we have this notation here of not equal to null. So if it's not equal to null, character exists. If it is equal to null, character doesn't exist. You don't really need to worry about the return value, what the address is in this case. We just care if it's equal to null or not. In this case, I will find a lowercase a 
right here at the second index and that will give me something that's not a good null then I'll print out the character does exist so again I'm going to come back to character search when we get to talking about memory addresses and whatnot later but for now it's going to move on length okay so I know I've talked about how to get the length of a array by taking the size of the array and dividing it by the size of the data type the array is made of but if we do that for a string or in this case a character array we are not going to get strength uh, the length of the string so the string length we are going to get the length of the character array and remember that if we do this sample string 11 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 7, 8, 9, 10. This is the length of the character array. This is the length of the string. It's two different things. So if you want to know the full size of the character array, you can do the array length like we talked about in the last video. But if you want the length of the actual internal string, then you would want to do the string length function. So just know that they are two different things. So this just enables the ability to get the length of the actual string data in the character array. Now, this returns the number of characters in the source string up to, but not including the first null terminating character as an integer type of size t. You don't really need to work with size t, just know it's gonna return like four, five, three, eight, some number. And you can treat like an integer, not a big deal. String link or string. We have that same sample string here, and then we have int sample length equals string length sample string. Then give me one, two, three, four, five, six. Should end up getting six for my sample length. There's six characters in it that I actually care about. That's pretty good. Again, it does not count the null character. Don't worry about that. Okay. Here, we're gonna touch back on string compare. We've already touched on string compare previously, but I feel if I'm gonna cover the string functions, it's good to come back to this and just kind of review it. So, function string compare enables the ability to compare whether two strings are identical or not. This is a very common function and again like i said the previous video went over this it's very easy to misunderstand how this function works in this case we're returning some integer and really we most of the time we only care if it's zero or not zero very similar to how string search we care if it's null or not null we can do more with it with the actual data it returns but those go into very niche circumstances but the most common one is, is it equal to zero or not? So in this case, we have integer, string compare, string one, string two. We're gonna pass two strings into it. We're gonna go through each one, compare them. If they're all the same ASCII values, the exact values, the exact amount of values, etc., etc., then it's gonna return zero, meaning there are no differences. And then it'll return some non-zero value if they're different and you can tell based on the ASCII values again I went over this already in a different video I'll add a link to it here at this point but now I'm gonna move on to the character functions this is gonna be very very uh, short and sweet because they're very 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 simple but also very useful so you're gonna notice everything is gonna start with is 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 so on and so forth it's determining is this character some has some trait so is alpha returns true if the character is alphabetic so lowercase a through z or uppercase a through z so if it is one of these characters it'll return true or in this case it'll return one or zero and then is digit will be true if it's zero through nine is alnum so that'd be alphabet number Returns true if C is alphabetic or a numeric digit. Returns true if is alpha. 
or is digit would return true. So it's kind of a combination of these two. And then is space returns true if the character is a white space, is lower and upper, obviously they're gonna return true if it is a lowercase letter or an uppercase letter respectively. Is blank returns true if the character is a blank character. These include spaces and tabs. Is X digit, so this X is here for a reason. It is different than just some random digit. This is for hexadecimal digits. So it's gonna be zero through nine, and then it also accommodates lowercase and uppercase A through F. So the hexadecimal number, number system is gonna be zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, A, B, C, D, E, and F. So if it's any of these characters, this will return true. And then we have is punct, which is is punctuation. And this is just, you're looking for one of these characters in this list right here. There's a lot of them. I'm not gonna go through that, but it's basically just your non-alphabetic, non-new, new line, spaces, tabs, etc. Just kind of your basic parentheses, math operators, just stuff like that. This is just a, a selection of them. So then we have is print, turns true if the character is a printable character. So that includes alphanumeric characters, punctuation characters, and space characters. It is quite a lot of characters. Most of the things you can think of right now would accommodate this being true. They have is control. Return C returns true if the character is a control character. These include non printable characters. That gets into some market territory. You won't use it too, too much. And again, it would be best to find a chart of things that would be non printable. It's not really possible for me to show, but I think. And stuff like your function keys, possibly anything to do with control, the combinations. So there's a lot of things in the ASCII table that you can't actually print out. It can't recognize them. So if it encounters anything like that, that is when this becomes useful. It's if I just say the least used ones, it's kind of probably, probably is control, and. I guess the hexadecimal digits are going to be pretty pretty obscure but they still have some functionality if you want to deal with the hexadecimal calculator and you want to make sure that the user is actually using the appropriate data here that is when you want to use these is blank is punctuation just kind of make sure that your users are inputting valid data because it's important and then finally these are going to be two different ones they're not determining if a character is something, they are changing a character, they are transforming them. So if the character is a lowercase alphabet character, so A to Z, this returns the uppercase version of it. If the character is a non-lowercase alphabet character, it just returns the character itself, it doesn't do anything. And the reason it doesn't do anything is because it could be wasted operations. Because it's already an uppercase character, or it doesn't have a variation so basically it's going to do a check and say is this a lowercase character if yes i'm going to give you the uppercase version and we've already talked about how to transform a lowercase character to an uppercase character by use of altering the ascii value and this is basically just a built-in function to do it same thing with two lower it does the exact same thing but it goes from uppercase gives the lowercase version if it's not an uppercase character it just does nothing it just gives you back whatever the character was. So that is about all I got for strings. Honestly, the reason I wanted to go over this one is to A, I want to show the difference between a character array and a string because there are some very key differences, especially dealing with the length of a character array and the length of a string. A lot of people can think of the exact same thing, but they're not because the underlying data inside the character array is what we care about. That is the string. 
wherever the first alternator is, that's basically what you're working with. Now you can have as much data in there as you want, so you can use it later, and when you put that however you want, but with how C handles it, it's just give me characters until I get your null character, that's string. So understanding that's pretty important, and then obviously going over a lot of the very, very useful and very common string functions in the string library. I've seen a lot of students, a lot of people just starting C, especially if they're coming from a higher level language like C++ or Python, will struggle a lot with dealing with strings just because C handles them quite differently. So understanding how to use that string library is absolutely critical. And then obviously the character functions are also pretty useful. They're coming handy quite a lot. So that's all I got for this. Hope you learned something. I'll see you next video.